Hey there, Commanders. Check this thing out. Uh, I debuted this last week as part of a, a short video. I had been doing some fighting with the AXI and uh, had been working on this Type 10 Defender for quite a while. Originally, I, if I remember right, I built this to farm Elite Rank because Thargoid Scouts were counted as Elite Pilots and it was more time efficient to go and just wipe out swarms of these things than it was to try to kill Interceptors. Uh, FDEF's since gone in and corrected this bug, I guess, in more ways than one. And um, now scouts are weighted more accordingly. So you can't necessarily farm elite rank just by killing scouts. You gotta actually work for it. This build is extremely role specific, so I don't recommend trying to take this out and kill anything bigger than a Cyclops. I have killed a Cyclops with this build before, it can do it, but you have to be very careful to get the Xeno scan in when the Thargoid comes to stare you down, and it only works in AX combat, or sorry, in non-human signal sources. In AX combat zones, the interceptors are going to be moving too fast, and this thing just, at 206 boost, it's not, it doesn't have the ability to catch them. So uh, if you're going to try to fight interceptors with this in a combat zone, you need at least one other ship that can get the Xeno scan so that everybody can sub-target, because with turreted hard points, uh, you won't be able to target individual hearts effectively, and that means that you basically can't kill an interceptor unless you have the uh, sub-target scan done. The archetype for this build is interesting because I do break a couple of... Um, there are exceptions to the rules I mentioned in my armor and shield construction video. Um, one of the big ones with Thargoid specific ships is that you don't want to do the most expensive armor variant reactive surface composite because it doesn't actually give you any more absolute hull than the cheaper military grade composite. So run mill grades on Thargoid ships to save on your rebuy but you are still going to heavy duty and deep plate them like a lot of combat ships tend to do. Um, well, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Some combat ships don't heavy duty deep plate, but we can get into that in other videos. Uh, the power plant, 8A, armored, grade 5, and monstered. This is important because Thargoids deal a lot of module damage, so you want to take reinforcement options where you can if you know that you won't be able to dodge the Thunderbolt. Most large ships are going to opt for armored and monstered. Um, there are a few exceptions to this rule, but if you have to ask, you probably don't know what you're doing and I wouldn't recommend it. I can get into those exceptions in another video for those who are interested. Um, if you are, leave the comments below, but most of the exceptions are centered around uh, the cutter and its ability to just cheese ridiculously strong shields. Let's see, 7B thrusters, reinforced, double braced, frame shift drive, shielded, double braced, life support reinforced to the maximum capacity, power distributor shielded and double braced. Because we're using multi-cannons, the 7A power distributor does not have a hard time driving them, so shield it up so that you don't get it fried by a Thargoid Thunderbolt. Long range grade 5 sensors, 4A so that we can get the range. You can do 4B to save on cost, it does increase your weight, but honestly it's not going to make that big of a difference, 206 boost. Um, 8B shield cell bank, specialized with boss cells. This is because we're doing PvE, we're not worried about uh, railguns trying to cancel our shield cell banks. And these two um, specialized in boss cells maximize the amount of shield reinforcement per cell for a total of 6,597 theoretical shield integrity that you could apply up here. Uh, 7A prismatic shield generator for maximum absolute value, reinforced high capacity. You can use a standard shield generator with the same combination for a little bit less shields, but you do get faster recovery rates, so dealer's choice on that one. I recommend prismatic, but you can get away with other stuff. Now, this size 6 module you can be flexible with. I have a shield reinforcement package in here just to give myself a little bit more breathing room, but this could be a fighter hanger, an extra hull reinforcement, any number of, of basically whatever you want to stick in there. The power plant's got enough room that, that you can uh, you could even throw a, an AFM in here if you wanted to. Now, I collect Thargoid hearts during fights, so I have a collector limpet controller with a 16-ton corrosion-resistant rack um, so that I can store limpets too. Um, hull reinforcement packages everywhere else except for one size 3 module internal, which I have a decon limpet controller equipped, and then the size 1. I have a docking computer. You could put another HRP in here, hull reinforcement package, anything really dealer's choice. I have a docking computer because this thing's a chore to dock and I can go use the bathroom or get a snack while my ship lands for me. Hard points. The larges need to be AX multi-cannons to maximize AX damage output. 
Um, and then I have three two uh, size two multi cannons overcharged with auto loader. This is to keep them synchronized with these hard points so that their ranges are all the same and I don't have turrets randomly opening fire one off at a time. And then the two smalls are beam lasers so that I can run support, long range grade five concordant and long range grade five regeneration sequence. This maximizes the amount of charge potential that the individual hard points can put out on any ship. Just make sure if you're charging someone's shields and they're on comms that you have them put a couple of pips in systems to maximize concordant sequences capabilities. Uh, utilities. Xeno scanner is optional. If you know you're only fighting scouts, the Xeno scanner is not really necessary. But I've found it to be helpful when I do end up having to help support damage on interceptors. So I would recommend including it, but you could put another shield booster in here or a heat sink or anything really. Um, the shutdown field neutralizer is, is the firm, yeah, uh, put this on here. Because the Type 10 cannot evade the shutdown field, it's not fast enough to get out of range. Um, so you're going to eat every single shutdown pulse that takes place in a practical fight. And this gives you the ability to save other people potentially if you're on it. I recommend having it paired in a fire group for quick access, not on a, a shortcut key. Heat sink launcher, so that uh, this is so you can hide from interceptors more than it is about uh, coping with the shield cell bank because the Type 10 has the highest heat capacity. And if you pop this in a combat zone, uh, you heat up about 160 and then cool right back down. Since none of your weapons are putting out a lot of heat and your engines actually put out less heat because of the reinforced blueprint, um, you're you're going to be fine. And you actually do want to hot bank on Thargoid builds often because it helps you cook off caustic damage without having to deploy a limpet. But you only got six of these and it's easy to run out if you're trying to stick the entire combat zone all the way through. So um, uh, having a heat sink launcher um, is more to get Thargoid aggression off of you when you get in trouble. And every once in a while you'll pick up the swarm randomly. Um, if you have good timing you can use this to avoid caustic missiles. And if a Thargoid Interceptor starts paying you direct focus, this can help encourage it to go bug somebody else. And then I mentioned earlier, all the shield boosters are heavy duty grade 5 super capacitor and they fill the remaining open slots aside from these three. The budget is intensive, a little over half a billion with a 27 million credit rebuy. If you're willing to shave power in different areas, um, undersize some of your modules over here and drop the prismatic you can get it down to an 8b for a cheaper rebuy but that comes at the cost of your endurance so I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys but it is an option that you can consider and um, uh, this thing steers like the Exxon Valdez so don't don't try to put gimbals on it you're, you're gonna spend all of your time with your flight stick pinned against your your limiter rail or if you're using keyboard and mouse you're gonna you be sliding the mouse off the desk all the time or having other things going on it's just um, it's just easier to have turrets. Also, um, so there's one other thing. Actually, no, I think I've, I've got everything. Oh, um, Guardian hull reinforcement packages. If you're going to stick one on here, I recommend um, sticking them in the smaller modules that do draw a lot of power, but ultimately uh, standard hull reinforcement packages will get you more absolute hull potential, even to the extent that um, caustic resistance stops really mattering, especially the amount of incoming damage you're going to take. It's better just to have a high absolute and no caustic resistance than a low absolute and high caustic resistance. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, post them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. I am aware of a couple people in, in the comment section who want me to do a review on the caustic missile racks, since we're talking about caustic damage a lot. I will try to get that done here soon. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, let me know.